Aha! Uh -huh. Hello there! Welcome back to Better Minecraft Mine Colonies. How are you doing? Are you having a great week? Are you looking forward to the weekend? Well, I hope so. And to get your weekend kick started, we have an action-packed episode of Better Minecraft Mine Colonies. But before we begin, let me go over some of the things I've done between episodes. So number one, you can see the area where I'm sat at the bench. This is the new staircase that goes up to one of our train stations. I finally got around to decorating and building this and it looks pretty swish. Great stuff. So what else? Well, like I said I would, I got all of the buildings on the military rise upgraded to level five. And that includes the walls, the towers, and the gate. And to be honest, they look really, really, really impressive. Now I had to go back and make a few changes. For one, the new Knights Academy that we set up, I replaced with an alternative version and moved it a bit so it fit with the walls. Overall, it looks really amazing, but the problem is level five walls cost a lot to make. So I think this is the only area where our walls are gonna be level five. And on the rest of the colony, like you can see here, we're gonna keep the walls to level three. Aha, uh -huh, welcome back. So still with me? Amazing. Next up, what we're gonna do is set up level five builds for all of the animal pens. That means the swine herds, huts, the chicken hut, the cow hut, the sheep hut, the rabbit hut, but also the plantation are all gonna get upgraded to level five. Now, as you can see, while I was doing my builds earlier, all of the research was completed. And what that means is our builders now can run way quicker and have an extra nine slots in their backpack. And I don't know why or how, but they're building these buildings much, much quicker than the military buildings from last episode. And as always, it's a real treat to see these get built in the background. Amazing stuff. Now we've only got four builders and we have about five or six, I think it is, yeah, buildings to build here. So we had to come back around afterwards and queue up the chicken hut and the cow hut. But now that these are all level five, honestly, this has really bolstered my hope that we're gonna get the complete colony up to level five before the series ends. And when is the series gonna end, I hear you ask? Well, that's gonna be when we get 200 dudes. And just like all the other buildings, now that these are level five, they look amazing. They look super swish, and I'm very pleased with them. Aha, uh -huh. so welcome back, and let's jump in game so I can give you a bit more of a ground level tour. Aha, uh -huh. so here we are on the colony, and we have empty builder scrolls across the board. All of our builders have absolutely nothing to do, and the clipboard says, there's not really much going on here. We need compost always. We always need smeltable ore and we always want ancient tomes, but otherwise everything's going really well here. Now, something we glazed over last episode was research. However, we have gotten all of the research done between episodes. That's five different research subjects. So let's go and queue up some more for this episode. Oh man, it's another dance party. Now, one of the things I wanted to do this episode was get plate armor for the guards. You guys in the comment section have been vocal in the fact that this is better than diamond armor and cheaper to make. So the question is, where are we gonna find plate armor? Well, a look down combat and boom, you can see right here. Oh wait, hang on a sec. We have two choices. We can make steel armor or we can make plate armor. Oh no, no, wait, one of those is just more durability. The other one is the actual armor itself. Well, plate armor sounds really freaking cool. So that's the one that we're gonna go for. We have five spots for research. So let's pick the ones we're gonna do. I reckon Mighty Cleave sounds good. Knight Training will be good as well. Provost for Knight's armor and plate armor will be the fourth one. But for our fifth research, the one we're gonna go for is heavily loaded. Now this is a level six research, one of the big boys. And it's gonna take us 16 hours to get it done. That's crazy. Also check out the cost, 256 emeralds, but with our villager trading farm, that's not gonna be a problem. 
So let me gather up those bits and meet you back here at Yale. And so we return with the goods. Here we go. So research, combat, and we're doing Mighty Cleave. Boom, for 0 0.5 night damage. Night training, which is going to increase the blocking chance. Provost, which improves the knight's armor. Plate armor is going to give us access to a brand new class of armor unique to mine colonies. And then down technology, we're going to go for extra bag space. Heavily loaded. Now, this is going to take a long time to complete. 16 hours. So what I'm going to do is, well, I'm just going to go to bed. And I'm going to catch you guys tomorrow when hopefully the research has completed. So, wakey wakey, eggs and bakey. Now, I did actually leave the server on overnight and I've woken up. It's been a long time, so hopefully the research has been complete. Oh, and looks like we've got Toby Carnage Aruda has come to say hello as well. I do like it when these weird colonists come and visit the, uh, the series. So, we'll hop on over to Yale and yeah, fingers crossed, this is the goods. Ah, uh, yeah, look at this. Zero of five research in progress. And if we go to technology, that means even the increased capacity of heavily loaded has been researched. So now our citizens can have more inventory slots. Plus, a whole bunch of combat research has also been completed. There we go. Plate armor. Excellent. Now, before we dive into plate armor, what I'm going to do is queue up a bit more research. But again, we're going to be bolstering our guards. So I'm going to get Savage Strike. Captain Training, Multi-Shot, Master Swordsman, and Steel Armor to make this plate mail a lot more durable. So let me go and grab those bits. So here we go, let's take a little bit of a look-see. We want Savage Strike for 32 blocks of iron, fantastic. We want Multi-Shot and that's going to cost 9 bows. Good for our archers. We want steel armor for 64 iron ingots. Now, oh, hang on a sec. So I wanted to learn Master Swordsman for 64 diamonds. However, it looks like when it says only one level six research per branch, it actually means per entire category of research, not branch of research. And you know what? That makes a lot of sense. Now, I do think that Savage Strike is probably still the best one because two damage is pretty hefty and the best defense is a strong offense. But we can do captain training. I haven't done that yet though because 16 shields requires a little bit more pack space. So let's go and grab the shields. There we go, 25 of these bad boys. And boom, captain's training. So that gives us one more research that we can investigate. So what do you want to do? So I've opened up civilian now and maybe it's time to think about the maximum level research we should do down the civilian tree. Now there's a lot of choices here. We can get XP growth. Ah, oh, wait, no, this is the one we want to do. Yeah, so the maximum level research we should do down civilian is going to be athlete. 10% walk speed sounds pretty crazy. 10% extra walk speed across the colony. That's going to speed everybody up an insane amount. Boom, that's the research done. Now let's get on to making plate armor. Yeah, the good stuff. Now you may notice around the colony a few more ticker tapes and construction tapes around these guard towers because yeah, if we want our guards to wear plate armor, their guard towers have to be high enough level. And I believe they only have to be level four. So let's take a stroll onto the blacksmith's hut to give him the recipe for plate armor. And we're going to walk because, you know, sometimes it's nice to look around the colony rather than just teleport everywhere. And a quick look at our resource scrolls for our builders. Oh, some of them don't have anything to do, but most of them are working on these guard towers. Amazing. And they have all the stuff they need, I hope. Yeah, so we'll leave them to it. Oof, now we have one problem. We upgraded our hospital, I think, to level four. And since we did that, 
it's kind of blocked the path here. So I think that's something we're going to have to fix when we, uh, well, I, I guess do the next pass on decorating the colony. Wait a minute. Do you guys see that? On the map? Is that, is that a red dragon? Is that where my dragon has been hiding all this time? What the hell? Where are I? Oh yeah, look at this. If my eyes do deceive me, it's a dragon. Wait, hang on a sec. Does this one have like a, it's got a saddle. Can I ride it? Yeah, you know what? Oh, I think this is my missing dragon. Okay, well, I mean, I think it's my dragon unless someone else is riding around on dragons and parking them here. But no, I think that's pretty impossible. Let's go and park this guy next to our other dragon. Oh yeah, there you go, uh, Toothless. You got a friend, it's Pyro. Oh, that reminds me. Yeah, as far as names go, you guys in the comments section mentioned something cool I could do with the signpost for the train. So yeah, purple haze is really difficult to read on this sign, but if I have some white dye, what I can do is, oh no, what have I done? Oh, no, okay, that's worked. I can make the text white, so it's much easier to see. Also, you guys said if I have a glow ink sack, I can also make it glow. Oh my god. Oh no, oh no, what have I done? Now it's illegible. Wait, I know, I can turn it back to black dye. Have I got any black dye? There we go. There we go. Oh, that looks amazing. Look at that. Fantastic. Purple haze, which is apparently a strand of weed. Anyway, let's send that bad boy on his way. Woohoo! Oh my god, yeah. So Zach Scotsman is doing something weird. All of my honor guard go back to where they're supposed to go and are chilling at Fort Crappington. But for some reason, Zach keeps coming over to check up on me and then going home to hang out in the tower. I don't know why. Also, he's the only one I can still see through the walls. I guess maybe he's a bit nervous about me. Maybe he wants to like check up on me and stuff. So yeah, it's okay, Zach. I'm doing fine. Now let's take the ladder down and go and configure the blacksmith. So my friends, the big question now is what is plate armor? Well, we'll go to crafting recipes over here. Oh, and as you can see, it's automatically been added to the blacksmith as soon as we did the recipe. So it apparently requires iron ingots, leather and coal. And I guess because coal and iron make steel and then the leather makes it, you know, nice and cushy. But I do wonder what it looks like. Now, yeah, we've had to get all of the guard towers around the colony up to level four so that they can actually equip the armor. But for now, let's go over to the town center and grab a set of this to see what it looks like. Here we go, the post box. So we're gonna request plate armor. Plate armor boots, plate armor pants, plate armor helmet, and plate armor in general. Yeah, and that looks good. This should all be over here quick as you like. So what is plate armor compared to diamond armor? Well, let's take a look. And yeah, it's nine armor and two magic armor. Is that the blue? Now my set of blazerite is eight armor and three, which is crazy. So actually this plate armor is even more protective versus physical attacks than my blazerite, which is netherite, chest plate armor. That's crazy. The boots are also four and two versus my blazerite boots, which are three and three. Now, oh, get out of here, Zach, you crazy fool. Now, my blazerite stuff is still a little bit better because it makes me 100% fireproof. But honestly, if we can get our guards in full plate armor, there is no raid on the planet that will ever be able to stop these guys. So what I think I'm actually going to do is request a few more pieces of plate armor so that I can give each one of my honor guard their very own set. Now we have five honor guards now, so we're going to get five sets of plate armor. So while we wait for that plate armor to get delivered, let's go over to our town hall and see how many dudes we can have now. We're getting closer and closer and closer to our 200 dude goal. Here we go, information, and oh yeah, look at this. So we can have a maximum of 147 citizens, but we've only actually got 104. That means there's over 40 slots 
in houses around the colony that can be filled up. Now there's a number of ways we can do this. We can turn on having children, which will probably result in a population boom. But before we do that, there's a couple more Patreon dudes I want to get in the colony. Now, because it's very late in the series, adding their names to the database means it might take a long time for them to appear in the tavern. So what I'm going to do is add their names directly to a couple of colonists that we hire. So the Patreon names we're looking to get into the colony are Horace McPoodle, Gizly McMatterson, Timmy Galoshes, Your Mom, a classic jape, and Tuppy. And I believe all of the other Patreons have had their name in the colony at some point. You may have died in the nether mine, <laughs> or you may have been, uh, you know, fed to creepers, died in the middle of a raid, but you've been a part of the crew. And I want to reiterate a big thank you to all of my Patreon members and my YouTube members for contributing to the community and, uh, yeah, being a part of the series. Once again, if you are a Patreon member or a YouTube member, do check out the Discord because it's where I mostly hang out and it's the best place to get involved with the community. Now let's go hire these dudes. So I lost my mind, Callistus. We're gonna hire, oh wait, no books. Actually, do you know what? Let's go and enable children and what we can do is just rename some of the kids to these, uh, <laughs> these colonists names. That's a great idea, isn't it? So here we go, kids will be born on. And now, fingers crossed, we're gonna start seeing some births. There we go, already Jadela Bits is now happily living in New Kingdom. Oh, so what we can do is we can hang out at the town hall and just summon them over. Citizens, scroll down to J, because I think this is alphabetical. Here we go, Jadela Bits, recall citizen. Here she is, and now we'll get the name tag, because this is going to be your mum. Wait, where'd she go? Come here, you. There we go, your mum. Next up was Ugo Gilmore. Here we go, you're a boy, so you're going to be called Tuppy. Come back here, you little, you little scamp. No, Ugo! <laughs> Slow down! Oh my god, I regret enabling citizen walk speed. Oh my god, this little, this little demon. Slow down! Boom, Tuppy. Next on the list is going to be Timmy Galoshes. You're a guy, amazing. So wait, slow down, you little, you little, you little poo poo. Oh my god, these are <laughs> so quick. Come here, you. There we go, Timmy Galoshes. Next up we have Asrian Jensen. Oh man, the kids are coming out thick and fast here. Boom. Gizly McMadison. Welcome to the crew. And the last on the list is going to be Horace McPoodle. Oh, wait, slow down, slow down. Oh my god, these little dudes. Okay, now we're gonna leave children being born on because we have a level 5 school now that just isn't seeing any use. So speaking of which, let's go over and check on these guys at the school. There we go, Timmy Galoshes and your mom having a great time. <laughs> oh. Well, amazing, that all works and we'll leave them to it. Let's go and see if we can pick up our plate armor. Town center. Spelled correctly, I might add. Oh, looks like, oh yeah, look at this. Full sets of plate armor. Oh, this stuff is the business. There we go, perfect. Now let's go up and see my honor guard and hook these guys up. All right, men and women, line up. Oh, these guys look amazing. Oh, except random nerd who is, uh, Still wearing diamond armor. Get that, get that crap off, man. Here's your plate armor helmet. Oh yeah, the bee's knees. These guys are now are ready to kick some serious butt. No matter what happens on the colony now, these guys can handle it. But you know what that makes me realize? Now that we've got all these guards kitted out in some amazing gear, and what we'll do is we'll fill up the warehouse with loads and loads and loads of plate armor. In fact, what I want to do, and I think this is probably a good idea, is set a stock minimum at the warehouse for one set of plate armor. So there's always a set of gear for our colonists to put on. And there we go. So that means the blacksmith now should always make sure there is one set of plate armor in the warehouse. And that also means that any guards that arrive on the colony will always use the best armor they can wear. And that's probably going to be the plate armor. 
Now, what we're going to do is we're going to trigger a raid because sometimes raids just don't happen for a while and it's a little bit frustrating, but we want to test our guards. So we're going to use a mine colonies command. Mine colonies. And then we're going to set raid all because I think I'm the only colony here. Now or tonight. No, we'll go now. And raid type. So here we go. We get to pick what kind of dudes we want to come against us. Now apparently the game decides what kind of foes attack your dudes based on the biome that your colony is in. So we've seen Barbarian because we're in basically, you know, the the, uh, the plains. We've seen Amazons because there's a little bit of jungle on the edge of our colony. We saw Pirates back in all the mod 6 and Strawfingers invaded with a Norseman raid. What we've never seen is an Egyptian raid. So that's what I want to trigger, an Egyptian raid. Boom. Raids on all colonies incoming, better prepare. Now I think we're pretty much ready. I've got my, uh, my Hammer of Doom. I've got my Axe of even more Doom. And we've got the Rallying Banners. Now 20 Guard Towers. Oh, here we go. They're coming already. Mummies to the Southwest and Southeast. And they've got, oh, is that like a magical staff? There could be casters and magic users with this raid. So be careful, dudes. What are you doing, Lara? Get home. Hide. Oh, maybe she lives in Jenga Heights. Anyway, let's go down and meet these dudes. Rally the guards. 30 guards are answering the call. I hope that's enough. Here we go. The mummies are at the gates. Wait, it looks like they've gotten through. Oh, no. Come on, dudes. Yeah, they're in. Let's go and crack some mummy skulls. Come here, you. Oh my god, mummies are tough. 100 health. Go and get them, lads. Now, maybe the mummies actually scale with the strength of your colonists. Go on. Oh my god, it's savage. This is crazy. But my guards are pretty intimidating. Oh, this is an amazing raid. Look at these guys go crazy. Oh, ancient tome. Don't mind if I do. Go on, get him, lads. Get him. Oh, that must be the boss. Look at him. He's wearing like a fancy crown. Let's take him downtown. Oh, no, we don't need to because our guys are just absolutely destroying him. Pharaoh, yeah, he's the king. Oh my god, the, the mummy king. How much health has he got? 94. No, wait, that's my guy. 450 health. Oh my god, that's incredible. Go on, lads, get him. Mob him. Oh yeah, fantastic. Look at that. Loads of XP for my dudes. Well, okay, where are the rest of these mummies? Now, I did look at the Mine Colonies wiki about raids, and it did say that these mummies, these raids, they can use ladders to cross over walls they can't get through, and they can also use pickaxes to break down walls if there's no path to where they want to go. So you do have to be careful. You can't cheese the system. Go on, lads, get them. Wait, now there's a few of these pharaohs, so I don't think there's only one per raid. Yeah, 457 health. That's crazy. Bird and Grumpy House, Druid Supreme doing God's work over here. Random Nerd still hasn't changed their helmet. What a noob. Now we also have a fair few archers now. Oh, only five raiders. Go on, get him. Get the Pharaoh. Slam. And again, slam. So there's one raider left. Now where is this rude dude? Ah, well, wherever he was, it looks like my guards took him downtown. Oh, yeah, indeed. Uh, oh, oh, also. So thank you very much for watching this episode of Better Minecraft Mine Colonies. We made a massive upgrade. We got our farms all up to level five. We also researched plate mail armor and got our guards wearing it as well. Now there's a lot of guards that still need to make the change and the upgrade, but that will happen over time. Next episode, we're gonna upgrade the industrial district to level five. Plus we're also gonna try and get more houses so that we can get closer to 200 dudes. As always, a massive thank you to Patreon members and YouTube members. You guys frickin' rock. And until next time, take care.
Straw Fingers says, ah, Dunny. It's been a while old friend. I have to admit I'm impressed that you actually found me. How did you make it over the walls? Or did you get in through the nether miner? Yes. That must be it. I know what you're trying to do. I don't know how you've gotten around the colony protections but mark my words, I will find a way to stop you. Surely you don't think the evils will reward you? You still think I'm doing this for personal gain? No matter, you are powerless within the colony bounds and what I've set in motion cannot be undone. Your problem was always that you think you're far more intelligent than you actually are. A smarter man would not have been so easily bound to that straw husk. The Vampire King will return and there is nothing you can do to stop it. We shall see.